Hello and welcome. My name is Matt Shear. I'm with PMA Practice Transitions and I help dental professionals buy and sell practices in the great state of Ohio in Western PA. And my colleague here is? I'm Joe Gordon. I do the same thing in the great Hoosier state of Indiana <laughs> and in northern Kentucky just because I like to bet on horses as much as possible. Nice. <laughs> Today's topic is? Today's insurance topic plans. is dental insurance plans, the bane of our existence. That's you know, right. For some of practices out there. I think, uh, um, you know, in a previous segment, you, you put up a, a, an illustration. I think we should start out with that. All I right. That was good. One of the things I always encouraged my practices when I was back in the CPA world was to at least look at their fee schedules and look at their insurance plans twice a year. And one tool I said, the simplest thing you can do, but everybody never wants to do it. And I said, well, I'll do it for you, but I'll charge you. Um, take a piece of paper, Put down your procedures in terms of gross revenue, 10 of them. Put it down that way. On the top, put your top insurance plans. If you have 10 insurance plans, put 10 insurance plans. Then put your own fee schedule there. And then just matrix out the reimbursement you get on those procedures by plan. You'll be shocked if you haven't done this before on the variances that you're going to see with the different plans. That gives you some leverage in going back to renegotiate those fees Absolutely. or to drop those plans entirely. Uh, it is. I think people find find that some of those plans actually pay less than Medicaid. Medicaid, absolutely. That so, all the time. So why not work smarter than harder, right? You may lose some patience if you drop some plans. I think that's always the fear of dropping plans that, oh, well, you know, Mrs. Smith isn't going, you know, isn't on that plan. I might lose her, and that's okay, um, because again, you know, you want the plans that reimburse you the best. I think if you explain to Mrs. Smith why you're drop, why you're sure. doing that, and you know, obviously she can, uh, you know, deal with the insurance company on her own and be reimbursed whatever they do, yep. that you'll maintain a lot of those patients. They will continue to come see you. It happens all the time. Absolutely, and, and I think you bring up a good point, is explaining to the, to the patient that, listen, this is the reason why I have to drop your plan. It doesn't reimburse me enough to do these types of procedures. So, you know, I, you have one of two choices. You can stay as a patient, and I'd be happy to have you, and I'll bill you out of network, or you can move on, right? Exactly. The other trend we're seeing now are in-house plans, yes. uh, where uh, dental practices are moving away from the insurance companies and setting up their own pseudo insurance company in-house. There's a number of companies that are doing that, uh, and we're seeing this as pushback against some of these. We've just seen uh, where Delta Dental has dropped a lot of their plans, not allowing new dentists into their premier plans. Correct and where they get a, a fairly decent reimbursement, and we just think that trend's going to continue. Yeah, and I think you bring up a good point with Delta Dental, um, and you know, I saw it a lot when I was in the banking world in Michigan because of the heavy auto industry, is guys that, and gals that were de, de, Delta Premier, excuse me, um, Delta Premier, they essentially got, they kind of got rid of it. It's not necessarily gone. It's just that the fee structure is a lot different. It's more of a PPO program now than it was before. So, you know, you might have had Delta Dental and maybe wrote off, you know, 10, 15%. Now it's a 20 to 30% write-off. Right. So that ultimately affects your value, right? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. So be very cognizant of what plans that you accept, what plans you continue. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely need to take a deeper dive into that, and there are people that can help you. And again, I think the key is don't be afraid. If you know you do this exercise and a plan just doesn't pay, get rid of it, and let your let your patients know. Just be upfront and honest. You're there to make money. So Very true. we appreciate your time today. Uh, we could certainly talk a little bit deeper uh, about this subject, obviously, um, but um, want to keep it uh, a little short for you and. Uh, if you like us, please give us the thumbs up and uh, certainly share us with your colleagues and friends. Thanks for coming along.